Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to a quick tips and tricks video for U-Boat. We'll be continuing on with the uh, last upload I made on the management side of the house. And I'd like to go ahead and address a few concerns some of the community had in more or less trying to automate your boat. Um, uh, you know, anybody who's uh, used to my content knows that I'm not really one for allowing the ship to do its own thing at any given time. However, um, you know, depending on your playstyle, maybe you just want to leave the dock and worry about stuff once you actually find an enemy ship. So we'll go ahead and I'll give you an indication of how I would be using um, management functions for the crew in order to set that up. So we'll just pop up here to management. I actually don't have um, enhanced crew management turned on for this particular game. However, the, the option to still play with the... Uh, the timings is still here. So just under schedule. And uh, the timings I'm going to plug in here are going to be more or less specific to the Atlantic, uh, given the time zone that you're in. Uh, if you were playing Mediterranean or North Seas, uh, you'd want to adjust this based on the uh, the time that the sun comes up in the day. But for the most part, this should be pretty close, no matter what, uh, what area you're playing in. Uh, quick disclaimer, you can't completely automate your boat. It's just not possible, right? It's there are things you have to do, unfortunately, for some, I guess. But uh, this this is as close as I would be able to figure out on, on how to get it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and set up a base crew of five. I'll ignore the, the additional crew for now, just so you'll get an idea of how to do this from the start of the game on. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, so you want to start off, well, obviously start at the top of the list with the skipper. This would be, of course, Klaus Graf if you just started a new game. And you would want him to begin work probably around 6 a.m. Uh, this is roughly when the sun is going to be either just up now or coming up or just now fully up when you're in the North Atlantic. And you're going to probably want him to work for a good 12 hours, honestly. So we'll start him at 6 in the morning and have him run till 6 at night. We'll actually uh, cut that one off there. And the reasoning for this is, um, and again, with my play style, my skipper is the one using the UZO. Uh, so you can see here in his tasks, you would want to plug in, say, you know, a 9 there, right? So if you go back into the scheduling, so now from sunup to sundown, his, his absolute priority one tasking is going to be working the UZO. And that's what we want him to be doing during daylight hours. It's not so much important what he's doing after the fact, but during daylight hours, this is what we want. Um, you can go ahead and get a little more advanced with it. You can give him so many free hours. Let's say something to the tune of six hours of absolutely sleeping. Let's go ahead and make it eight for fun. And then if you wanted to, you could give him two hours of anything time, followed by two more hours of sleep. Maybe he'll jump up and be able to get some navigation done if you went ahead and threw in a, an eight here, just in case your, uh, your normal navigation officer was busy doing something else for those two hours. It just gives you a little bit of a buffer zone, right? You definitely want to keep a buffer in mind. Um, so moving on to your second in command, I personally like to have sort of like an A shift and a B shift in mind, an A crew and a B crew. Um, I ordinarily would have my skipper and my second in command running on the same shift. You may be opposite, you would want them running opposite shifts, but uh, if, if that's the case for you, just go ahead and do the opposite of what I'm doing here. So I would probably marry him up to the skipper myself, just because I, I like to know when my navigation is being done. Uh, so he'll be navigating here the entire time, let's make sure. And yes, navigation is definitely high in his priority list. That's great. Um, I'd probably do the same kind of idea. Give him a bit of a sleep time. And then a little bit of anything. And then a little bit of sleep. Now, let's go ahead and give him... I don't know. Let's make uh, make his navigation a 9. And we'll give this a 8, let's say. Uh, so, if during this timing right here where the skipper's asleep. Um, perhaps uh, what the skipper's doing here is maybe he's playing with cards with the crew, depending on how you're going to set up your tasks. Uh, he's doing something other than working the UZO, then your second in command can take over for you. Um, so let's assume that Seal Centurion down here is my, my primary engineer. I would again marry him to the same schedule, because I want him working when my skipper is working. Uh, and again, it'd be the same kind of idea with this. You, you get the idea. Um, your mechanic can also be working the engines for you, obviously. 
So I would actually put him on an opposite shift. So I would actually have him working for these 12 hours. And then I'd probably just tell him to get his head down for the rest of the time that he's, uh, he's... For the rest of the day. Um, I mean, warming torpedoes and stuff, you're probably going to be doing that manually if you're in a battle. So I wouldn't worry about it too over much. Um, I'd go ahead and make sure he had a good tasking for the engines. Let's just go ahead and call it an 8 for the sake of argument. And so you can see here when your primary uh, mechanic is, or sorry, your primary engineer is running your engines, your secondary engineer is sleeping, uh, and then your secondary jumps up, takes over on the engines while this guy is doing the nappy nap thing, and you're still saving a little bit of diesel overnight, right? So for your radio operator, this one gets a little interesting. Uh, you want to keep your radio in as fresh as you can, especially when you first start the game and you only have access to the one. Uh, while all of your other officers can indeed perform basic radio duties and use the hydrophone, your radio officer is much, much better at the hydrophone taskings than they are. He gets a much larger sight radius, or uh, sound radius, I guess. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that he's doing his thing pretty much uh, as often as you can get him to do it without him passing out from exhaustion. So let's say uh, we started him out at 6 in the morning. Let's have him work for 4 hours. And then he would get his head down for the subsequent four. And then work. And then down for, let's say, six hours. Then he could work for three and take a nap for three. So this should give you a more or less well-rested radio operator, okay? Um, a lot of your, if you do a lot of hunting at night, which is what I tend to do once I lose sight, I tend to dive and get my radio operator running, um, like the night shift sort of thing, keeping an eye out for ships for me. So you may want to switch these where he's doing more of his work late at night as opposed to earlier in the day. But again, your mileage may vary. And I just realized I did all that for a mechanic, but I meant to do it for my radio operator. Go ahead and pretend I did it for the radio operator. You know what? Let's just do it. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad clicking the wrong thing. Okay, so your radio operator now is going to be working for four hours, sleeping for four, working for four, sleeping for six, working for three, sleeping for three, and so on, right? So this is, this in a nutshell is how I would set up my boat. Um, so if you only had your five officers to begin with and you wanted your boat as automated as possible, this is what you'd be looking like for those five op officers, right? So you'd be going skipper, second in command, engineer, mechanic, and this would be your radio guy. Um, this is as close as I can possibly get to an automated ship. Um, I've had quite a few requests uh, asking me about how to completely autom automate the boat, and it's just not possible. There, there are... There's things that you just have to dive in and do, and I mean, if you're not... if if you're against the idea, this this is not going to be your game. Uh, um, unfortunately speaking, this is a simulator. So you are going to be going in there and doing certain things. Um, so again, just want to point out that if you do set your ship up in uh, this configuration, a similar, similar one, so on and so forth, you definitely want to jump in here to your tasks and make sure they marry up. So if you need this guy searching for ships in this time frame right here, then you've got to make sure that searching for shifts right here under observation is his primary tasking. I know it says his primary tasking is actually dealing with cowards and such, but realistically you're not going to be doing that because the game defaults to the, to the action that is most profitable in the moment, right? I would actually go ahead and make this say a 5, um, just because during his scheduling, when he has this little bit of anything time right here, we don't want him getting in Mr. Taft's way and jumping on the navigation station and upsetting Taft's um, workflow. You could even make sure it wouldn't happen by, uh, say, swapping like this. He'd get six hours of sleep, two hours on, four hours off, and then do his normal daily 12, right? So yeah, um, as far as automation goes, that's as close as I could get, honestly. Um, your mileage will vary. It's not even that it may vary. It will vary. It depends on where you are in the world. What you prioritize, it depends on who you use for what. Uh, I see an awful lot of players out there using their second in command as their primary UZO officer, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. 
Um, so you would have maybe a different way of prioritizing what you want them doing. And maybe morale is really, really, really important to you, and you want them cooking for the crew and playing the cards and so on and so forth. And that's something you got to bear in mind too, right? Um, and you got to remember that you are going to be interrupting their taskings. So if you come across a convoy, if you get a radio signal in the middle of the night and you have to change course and now maybe you want to go flank speed so you want both your navigation table and your engineer running everything at top then you are you are going to have to upset their schedule uh, if so long as you rest them properly they will default back to the schedule you set up for them so let's say uh, with the skipper here i had to wake him up here to do something and then he went back to sleep here he should jump back up at 6 a.m. and jump on the UZO like I programmed him to do. Um, but that, that that's really as close as I can get for you folks, honestly. Um, if you have a better system, if you have managed to completely automate your ship so that you do absolutely nothing until you get out to the battlegrounds and uh, run into something to shoot at, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Um, and if you're on the Discord, uh, maybe take a screenshot, throw it in the um, throw it in the images section for the U-boat game, and uh, we'll see if we can get a little combo going about it. Again, management is not my strong suit, as anybody who's seen my videos knows. I, I don't like I don't like people on the ship doing stuff. I, I don't want them to do anything. I just want I want to control literally every aspect of their lives. But that's just me. All right, folks, I hope that answered some questions that uh, that a few of you have been throwing at me. And, I, you know, I'm always happy to try to dig into those for you. Um, I tried answering a few just with text, and I can't explain it very well that way. I, <laughs> I have to be able to show it to you. So, again, your mileage will vary. This might not be the setup for you, but perhaps you can use this, this sort of baseline to arrange the way you want your boat to work. All of my social media can be found down in the description of each video and, of course, on my About page. And until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.